What's up, nerds? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we've got some hot, hot, hot items that we're gonna be adding to our kayaks that are gonna help us out with lots of things, like not destroying stuff that's really expensive. And sight. And also seeing stuff. I think this is gonna be cool. So this is gonna pair up really well with our Garmin Panoptics install. So if you haven't yet watched the install videos, please consider hopping back and checking them out. And if you guys could, go watch them, throw them a like, we appreciate that. By the way, before we dive into these amazing items from Burley Pro, you could definitely consider Burly Fishing as a channel you would subscribe to and maybe also like this video and share it and stuff and for more dad jokes visit Burly Fishing <laughs> <laughs> If you want dad jokes and no rails included you should definitely come to our lives Thursday 8 p.m. Eastern We'd love to see you guys there and talk to you in chat. That All is, right, that is the main that is the main content 98% <laughs> dad jokes. All right, so what we got today is we got three products here from Burley Pro. Burley Pro, if you guys don't know, is an Australian company that creates super cool kayak accessories out of this like really nice, rigid, rugged plastic material that is gonna hold up epically. So they made these side pockets that are made out of the same material as this that are supposed to attach to the side of the Hobie Pro Angler seat, which is super cool. They're called the Van Bros because I think the seat is called Vantage Pro. Anyways, you guys correct me in the comments. I don't care. Uh, but yeah, they're pretty cool. Yeah. There's like a jig pocket where you can like hang your jigs in there. It's got little slots for the hooks. The other side pliers. has pliers. Clutch. like. And it comes with like a whole bunch of holes where you can like set up like some shock cord, which is awesome. So you can like latch your pliers in there, especially if you're out on like rough waters. They also make a drop-in bin for the Hobie uh, oh, yeah, Pro that's Angler. New. And yep. it's really cool because it has like a, a trim down section. So you can basically put a tray on top mm -hmm. and then keep stuff underneath it. it. It like creates some separation and gives you like a 3D storage option, yep. which is actually a huge like kind of benefit, but also potentially kind of a drawback of the standard Hobie drop-in uh, option. Uh, like in, there's like a, basically a portal inside right in between your feet. Yeah, it drops into there. It's it's actually a really good idea. Super yeah. good idea. Yeah. So point is they make they make up essentially. They yeah. just like forge solutions out of plastic mm -hmm. for your plastic vessel. Super cool company. Yeah. I wish they weren't in Australia. I wish they were closer. But the cool thing is that you actually have a U.S. based distributor here. There's a few of them actually. So Mariner Sales is like the major US based distributor. There's also, you know, a few other companies like I think Fish Online, Fish USA, like yeah. they'll distribute some of their products. But if you want the full catalog, including even like discontinued yes, items, yes. go to Mariner Sales. That's where we buy all our stuff from. Mm -hmm. That's where these came from. And let's get into these things. Yeah. So three new items that we've picked up. We've got the Sun Visor. Look at that beastly beast, which is going to attach to this thing. Would you like to see how? Pow, look at that thing. So when we're on the water, I'm gonna just turn it real quick. The front up there. Yep. There you go. There you go. So look at that. So when you're on the water, you got the sun just bearing down on you and you can't really see your screen that well. Guess what? Now you can. So this is super uh, helpful. It comes with the bolts and uh, Garmin, you know, already has actually a space for these visors. If you guys can see there, there's already a hole for it. Look at that. So you literally just pop those bolts in, you're good to go. Super easy install, very thing, helpful thing. If something is going to break, this is probably the one thing that would break the f like instantaneously uh, because it, you'd be surprised how much action is happening right in front of the boat. Uh, yeah. So having one that's a little bit higher quality, I, I do think is worth it. The other thing too is I can't yeah. explain, with a larger screen, if you've got like a five or a seven inch screen and you're, you yeah. find yourself doing this or like holding your head up to be like, The bigger the that? screen, the bigger the problem. Exactly, so this actually does does become something that that can it's I think it's worth it mm -hmm. I think it's worth it uh, these are gonna run you anywhere between like 45 and 67 dollars depending on the size of your screen so we have the Garmin echo map ultra 106 SV there you go Okay, it's a 10 inch screen. So they do have like a 12 inch screen. They've obviously got like 14, 16, whatever, gigantic screens. I think John B just put an actual 40 inch television on his boat. I just saw that. Why video. not? Uh, Cause yeah, obviously. Uh, so the bigger it goes, the more plastic it uses, therefore the bigger the cost, right? But because this is a super durable, like it is a ultra hardened plastic mm -hmm. that will hold up really well. We'll show you one that's gonna get the crap kicked out of it all the time, like all day. Its purpose is to be Every up. day. We'll show you that in, in just a second. But this stuff is gonna hold up for a long time. And I can say that because I've used those side pockets yeah. now for a year and a half. And they get everything thrown in them. No and thrown way. at them. <laughs> like they're fine. They're totally fine. Yeah. I'm really happy so far with like all the Burley Pro stuff that I've used. 
All right, so next up is the one that I mentioned is gonna get the crap kicked out of it all the heck in time. So this is a keel guard. And you guys have probably seen like, I think it's gator tape and different brands like that, which is keel tape. So I you use... put on the bow of your boat, like that little front section. Basically that the part that hits takes... the ground when, exactly. you, when you bring in. Or when you're dragging your boat or yep. uh, anytime you're-, you're um... Don't drag your boat. People hate when you drag they your really boat. They really do. Dude. When you're, be like if you're <laughs> if you're about to be, uh, breach, right? Like you're, you're in your kayak and you're coming mm -hmm. up to like a, it's not usually a sandy beach, right? Yep. So when you pull up, this is the first thing that's gonna get knocked is the very front of your boat. And if you've ever seen like an old canoe, which yep. I actually just purchased one, where you're gonna see almost all of the damage from moving the boat, transporting it, it's right on the front there. Yep. So Jeff mentioned like an alternate option would be like a gator tape. It's pretty inexpensive. Um, and it's basically like a, uh, a, a, a big strip of, it looks like electrical tape, but it's about 50,000 times thicker. Yep. You lay it across the front, you get it stuck on, you get it on as close as you can, then you use like a hair dryer to really mold it right to it. It works very well. It's not as inexpensive as you think. You would think this would be like a $10 option. It's more like a $30 to $50 option. It's the same price as this, if not more expensive. Exactly. This is actually cheaper mm -hmm. and it's one piece. So all you actually have to do with this, you can see, look, it's hollow. You literally just coat this in like marine goo or marine weld, whatever you want. And you just go and you just stick it on the front of your boat and then you let it dry. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna install this, yep. and at the end of the video, we'll show you guys how this all looks on the actual boat. Uh, so these are awesome, super pumped about it. And again, like Paul was saying, when you beach, just imagine that. If you have a kayak without any keel protection, just go look at the bow of your boat on the underside. Ours are hecked up real you'd bad. Be <laughs> you'd be so you mad. Would, you probably will be surprised even after one you'd season. Like, There's no way. Yeah. And I'll say my canoe, um, it's wrecked. It is. It's from 2013, and it's got some damage. Yeah. But um, I'm not saying that this is the only option, but it is a it's great not. option, and it's actually a lot easier to install yeah. though. Um, so there's a lot less work, and because of the marine group, like the one thing that I noticed about, I was gonna put the, I was gonna put the gator tape on my mm -hmm. canoe when I was putting yep. it in the storage. Um, you have to have like 70 degree ambient, so you basically have to do it either in the summer or indoors. Oh, just really, you can't adhere it I'm in, in colder weather. I'm in Michigan and that right happens now- happens almost never. <laughs> it's, in, it's May and yesterday, uh, or like three days ago, it yeah. snowed. So it's, it's true. I mean, I know that's Today like such a- gonna be 80 though. I know, but then in two weeks, or in two days, we're gonna get a snowstorm. It's a very <laughs> odd, it's a very odd, small, minute yeah. problem, but it's just something to call out as, as far as ease of installation. Like putting glue in there and smashing it on versus having to get out a hairdryer, measure, cut, uh, clean, all that other stuff. It's pretty simple. So I think those are like, they run like the mid $30 range. So again, not that bad. And again, please buy from Mariner Sales. If you buy from the Australian company, Burley Pro, you will pay $42 to simply ship plastic. Mm -hmm. Do not recommend that. You, you can it's get international some, You can get some of the stuff on Amazon, yep. but it's from other retailers. You're gonna pay yeah. for a little bit more for shipping and stuff. Mm -hmm. The Mariner sales stuff, again, I'm in Michigan, so I, know, I don't know where their distribution is located. Yep. I got my stuff in three days for, for $5 of shipping. Yeah. Um, absolutely worth it. Okay, so the last piece we picked up that we need to install today uh, is very important. So this is a transducer cover that fits uh, basically all models of transducers. Like if you have a Hobie Pro Angler like yeah. we do, then on the bottom side, whether it's the, I think the Outback has this too, the Guardian yep. yep. So if you have like the Hobie Outback, if you got a Hobie Pro Angler and it's like post 2019, like you've got a Guardian shield underneath, a retractable shield, which is nice. Means you can retract, like pull up when you're running over like rock or beaching your boat or whatever. You can pull up that transducer that's attached to the bottom of your boat and protect it. The problem is that even then, like all rocks are not flat and you will scuff up your transducer. It's going to happen. So and it, you and probably it, don't want to damage a very <laughs> expensive piece of equipment. The transducer is one of the more difficult things to install mm -hmm. on the entire, after having gone through it. It was it's a pain in the butt. One of the more difficult things to install, especially if you're, if you're not buying a Lowrance and you're putting this on a Hobie. It's yeah, also, that's the thing. it's also one of the things that is exposed. Oh, no, it is the thing that is exposed to the most damage because it's underneath your kayak, underwater, and it is mm -hmm. the lowest point of your boat when you're in the water. So even if, let's say, mm -hmm. you know, you don't, you you're never gonna know when you're gonna hit a rock. I mean, let's just be honest. You're yeah, never like gonna you're know just ready when you're like, oh, look, the log I was gonna hit. And pull the no, That's not how it works. So um, pull the line. <laughs> exactly. Now, you, now there are certain times like you're gonna go in. You're like, okay, I pull it up. It's also something you forget. Absolutely. Having having. I I've have left my, it I have down a, many times. I have a process now where I like pull everything yeah. in, and I've done it 
I've done it dozens and dozens and dozens of times, and I still occasionally would forget. I still occasionally would be late to the pull on something. Um, so it's it's certainly I'll drive awesome around for you with my rudder down all the time. <laughs> and so it, it's this. I think this was actually of all the stuff that you're looking at right this now. This is why we originally made this, this is, order. Yeah, this is the original purchase. All right, but you can see there's a few different like shapes in there because it's designed for your your Humminbird yes. or Garmin. Like it'll fit your other transducers, or if you have like a massive transducer, like mm -hmm. the Garmin is pretty big. So it's gonna fit into here, which is awesome. That's gonna protect it. It's gonna sit like that on the bottom of the boat. You've got all these bolt holes around it. So it's gonna be hyper secure to our Guardian Shield. It ain't going nowhere. So I know what you guys are thinking right now, like, oh, but you covered your transducer. It turns out like you can actually clearly shoot the sonar through this plastic. And Burley Pro mentions that and explains it on their website really well. For side imaging and down, down imaging. And that's yep. the whole point, because we do have the combo. So the side, side view, clear view. If you if you ever had installed a transducer in a kayak, one of the things that can be very frustrating is finding a solution that allows you to safely have your transducer out in the water to execute side imaging. And you'll see there's three holes here on the bottom. Those are actually just for draining sand debris whatever crap it's gonna get in here somehow through the the cracks or whatever it's gonna happen and the guardian shield retracting so it's just gonna pull it kind of pulls water in when you retract that shield and drop that shield uh which is you know there's actually a scupper hole right under the seat yes. i don't know if anybody else in the hobie has experienced this but if you don't have a crate underneath you water shoots up <laughs> to your butt where <laughs> you're just like whoa hi <laughs> it's, kind of, it's an on the water bidet nice oh man so anyways, <laughs> so you have this thing, holes there will let all that sand, debris, water, whatever, just drain out. You know, ultimately what happens, we protect the transducer. Very expensive. Yeah. So you do not want to destroy it, obviously. Um, so this would be awesome. Investment protector. Let's go put these on the boats and show you guys what they look like. Okay. Fishing with Jeff. All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and install this uh, transducer cover. And it turns out we had like ultra bolted our Garmin transducer to the Guardian Shield. Turns out we didn't really need to do that. And you especially don't need to do it when this is bolted on fully covering it. So it's not going to fall off anywhere. What we are going to do to make sure that it doesn't like swivel on us at all, even a little bit of play. I'm gonna drill two holes here in the back and we'll run another zip tie. I could even do two up front and it would absolutely go nowhere. And then we'll cover it with this thing and we are good to go. So let's do that. Garcon, zip ties. Zip tie guy Paul. Still a little bit of play. I mean, we could. So we're gonna throw one up front as well. I'm gonna make sure I don't drill a hole in my cable. That'd be super sad. There we go, okay. Da, da, da. So first, you, what you're gonna do is line up the front two bolts. The front, the front two bolts go right into the towers that are already built into the Guardian Shield. So Jeff has lined those up and he's gonna screw those in to start. Done. Okay. So now Jeff has to drill four more holes. Two in the middle and two in the back. Now these next four bolts actually come with the Brilli Pro hardware. Jeff's gonna very gingerly dump out a giant thing of tiny pieces onto a piece of cardboard that is gonna blow away instantly. <laughs> <laughs> we have fun. Boom! This thing is sick. Solid. Oh my God! Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we're just gonna mount it underneath here. All right, Jeff, get under that kayak. There we go. <laughs> So what Jeff is doing right now, he's got a, actually, there's a, there's a string essentially um, that allows you to pull the Guardian Shield up and down. He's got to tie that uh, to the Guardian Shield. And uh, they recommend an anchor hitch, I believe. That's what I've always used. I think Jeff used the same, right? Yep. Which is a pretty simple knot. And honestly, one, because it's so tight and gets pulled on so often, it's basically like, there's so much memory in that string that yep. it, it, like, it ties itself basically. Yep. So now just gotta do is put, uh, how many bolts are there, four? Three. Three. three oh bolts. yeah, because the first two are, yep, so there's three bolts that he's gonna have to put in. Kind of a pain in the neck, honestly. Yeah. We've done it so many times at this point, yeah. though, it's like. This is sick. 
All right, so we've got all our screws in. Jeff is gonna go ahead and pull that cable and show you what it's supposed to look like. So there it is, that's the underneath. There it is, and that's how it retracts away when you pull the cable up. And it's still, you can tell, pull it all the way up, Jeff, so you can tell there's still a very small amount here, but all that is protected, where, whereas before, your transducer would be right here. It's barely within the inside of the hull, uh, but now you've got all that extra protection. Looks outstanding. There it is, and that's what it looks like. Uh, again, side imaging, plenty of space for you to shoot that image out to the side, or shoot the, um, shoot the vibes out to the side, <laughs> shoot the signal out to the side and the Straight bottom. Straight vibes, dude. And then you got these three holes for drainage. This is outstanding looking. Uh, match is perfect and heavy duty. All right, so we got the visor installed. Now I wanna point out a couple of things I didn't see on any of these visor installation videos that makes no sense to me. Uh, number one, you have these little sticky pads that go on the back of your unit that will obviously have bolt holes already. So these two are the top and bottom. These two are the sides. So that goes on the back of your unit. So you would just pop it off of this uh, stand. Then you're gonna stick these to the back of it. And then from there, that simply pads it. It's just nice to have. Like, I don't think it's necessary, but it's nice to have. The tricky part was this. It is nice that you can still use this face plate while this is on there. This top and bottom piece here, this is just a little piece of plastic. You literally just pry it off. So cautiously, you know, carefully just kind of pull that up a little bit and it's got a bunch of little snaps on it. You can see it's already coming off like that. So you pry that thing off and then underneath there, actually I'll do it so you can see. So underneath there, you can see the holes. So you put your bolt through there, okay? On the back side, we've got a nut and a washer. Highly recommend not losing the washer like I did because uh, you'll just have to find another one you can use. That's what the but, back side looks like. Yeah, so you just bolt it on like that. Simple, there's full four bolts, nuts and washers. 10, nice 15 minutes, probably total installation. Yeah, and now you've got awesome. a sun visor. I mean, it's sweet. So there we go. So that's that piece. All right, so next up we got the keel guard. I've got mine installed. Paul's gonna have to do his at home, but here's what it is. Simple piece of plastic. So all you're gonna do is you're going to take some marine goop. Take your marine goop, you're gonna go around the edge of that. Now what they do recommend is like, you can see on Paul's boat here, there's already some scuffs obviously, like that's pretty normal. There's also a lot of sand. So clean this off, take some fine grit sandpaper, sand off just the tags. So like his bottom is probably the worst part there. He's gonna have to sand that down. Right where we're trying to protect. Exactly. <laughs> And then once it's like more smooth, from there, take some cotton swabs and some isopropyl alcohol. You're gonna just wipe this thing down all around where this piece is gonna go. And it goes like that. And then once that's nice and clean. And you can see too, it's not gonna fit in perfectly snug. So nope. go ahead and put that piece up. You see? can see there's, there's gaps there. It's not a quite perfect yep. fit because there's not enough pressure to really push it you right up against the hull of the kayak. A ton of pressure on this thing, so. So Jeff, what was our solution for that? If you would turn around real quick, you'll see our solution. So this was, this seemed pretty obvious to me. Just go ahead and we ha I have a, Jeff and I both have a kayak cart. Mm -hmm. um, so we just basically put all the weight of the boat right on the front there. Um, and as you can see, he got a nice, good seal. Um, turned out really nice. Yep. So what I did is I went goop all around the rim of this, just below the rim actually, cause it'll just squeeze out the top, which actually isn't, in my opinion, a bad thing. Cause you can just wipe around that with your finger and get a nice tight seal. The other thing though, is I took goop all around the bottom area, right? So once it makes contact with this, it's going to stick once this dries out, right? So there you go, you shove it on there. It's gonna look like that. Paul's gonna do is at home. Ta-da! So that's it. We got a ton of Burley Pro stuff on our boats and we're super pumped about testing it out, putting it through the ringer this season. Um, but I, I mean, I'm stoked. Like we are protecting a big investment for us. And if, you're a river ang if you're a river angler, these are all it's, necessities. It's kind of on the necessity portion yeah. of things. Yeah, and the sunscreen, I think a lot of people use sunscreens on their fish finders, especially if you get the bigger fish finder. I noticed before, even with our five inch yeah. ones, like I would get that glare and I have to angle it all weird ways. I'm stoked that we don't have to do that anymore. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to smash that like, ring that notification bell, throat punch karate chop the su subscribe or whatever as you want to do. Can. And then come back live Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern. We'd love to see you there and talk to you in chat. You got to go home. Let's go. Okay, bye. Bye.